Hello and welcome to today's um, discussion on charging a capacitor. We're going to use a bit of differential calculus to come up with the equations uh, for the charge at any time during the process of charging a capacitor. All right. First off, let's look at the definition of a capacitor. A capacitor um, is a device that stores charge, all right? and the measure of the capacitor's ability to do that is the amount of charge it can store for every volt. It's measured in farads. Uh, I can rearrange these equations. We've got the battery there, a DC battery. I've got a switch, a resistor and a capacitor. All right, now, the resistor's only there to slow down the charging of the capacitor. When the switch is in position one, the capacitor will charge. Yeah, current will flow from the battery to this plate and it'll charge up, propelling similar charges from that plate until it reaches the same voltage as the battery. Then it'll stop charging and no more current will flow. If I put the switch in position two, the charged capacitor will discharge and all the charge will want to get to the other side of the, uh, to the other plate, going round that loop there. All right, so a simple diagram for charging a capacitor. Um, now using Kirchhoff's laws, I can write the voltage battery must be equal to the voltage across the resistor plus the voltage of the capacitor. Alright, fair enough. You know the voltage across the resistor will be current times resistance. And we know from them formulas up here that the voltage across a capacitor is the charge divided by the capacitance. Alright, so I can write charge over capacitance for that part. Now here I'm going to divide every term by R, that gets rid of the R from there, and then I'm going to multiply this term by C divided by C, capacitance divided by capacitance, that's the same like multiplying the fraction by 1, so it doesn't really change the makeup of it, uh, it doesn't change it numerically, but it changes how it looks, and I can manipulate that further. Uh, you'll notice these denominators become RC and RC. I can also say the voltage across the battery times the capacitance, that's this term here, gives me charge, right? So the capacitance times voltage gives me charge, but that'll be the maximum charge in the system, because it's the whole voltage of the battery. This charge here will be the instantaneous charge of the capacitor, depending on how long it's been charging for. I can rewrite my equation like this. I've got Q max divided by RC. Uh, current, this current here, that can be defined as the change in charge over the change in time. And the last bit was the instantaneous current in the capacitor divided by RC. So we've now reached this uh, format for our equation. Now if I take the, both the RC terms to one side, I'll end up with that. And I've got the current uh, equals 1 over RC t times these Q max minus Q. The thing is here though, I'm going to do a bit of a uh, fiddling with this to make that Q positive. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the whole thing by a negative, which I've done here. I multiply by a negative on the outside, that means I swap them signs over in there. Now I'm going to stick the DT to the other side, multiply both sides by DT, and divide both sides by Q minus Q max. Right, so what that does, it's, it sets me up this equation. I got all my Q's on one side, all my T's on the other side, and I integrate both sides. This is your classic method for doing differential equations, okay, called separating the variables. So now I've done that, I just go ahead and integrate it. Uh, to integrate this, this side with respect to Q, if the, if the numerator is the differential of the denominator, then the integral is just the natural log of the denominator. So that's fine, like I can see there, natural log of the denominator. For this side, uh, it's just a constant, and I'm integrating with respect to t, so it's going to be this constant times t. So that becomes just this, alright? Uh, with these limits, if I put 0 and it goes to 0 and t, well it's already at t, so I can sort of 
get rid of them limits there. This one I have to substitute the limits in because when that's zero, this will be the natural log of minus Q max. So let's move along and see that. Yeah, this side becomes when the limit's Q, when the limit's zero for the left hand side, on the right hand side it just ends up going to that. Now on this side we can do use the log laws and create a division and coming down here you can see that done like that. Now we're starting to get really close to this. What I'm gonna do now is take the inverse log of both sides. So I get to that. Then I'm gonna separate this fraction so I get to this. I can see that term there then becomes minus something divided by minus something. It's gonna be plus one. So I can rewrite this side as one minus that. And then the last step is I need to make this Q positive. So I'll take that to the other side, bring the E to the other side, and I'll end up with Q over Q max equals one minus E to the minus T divided by RC. And then if I multiply through by Q max, I get my final equation here. Q equals Q max, brackets, one minus E to the minus T over RC. Right, and then I can also use this formula for the voltage and across the capacitor at any time and also the current flowing through it. I've written the voltage one there, look. So what does this equation actually mean? Let's have a quick look at it. Well, if I make T zero, so at time equals zero, that'll be zero. I'll get A to the power zero gives me one. One minus one is nothing. Q max times nothing is nothing. So at time zero, the charge across the capacitor will be zero, exactly what you'd expect. Now what if I can make T equal to the value of RC, right? T equals RC, well then this would be one, and E to the minus one is about 0.37, one minus 0.37 gives me 0.63. So when T equals RC, what we call the time constant for the system, the voltage will be 63% of the maximum voltage. All right, and if I make T five times bigger than RC, the voltage will be 99% of Vmax. All right, so I hope this gives you sort of an idea of how we can use differential equations to develop uh, the formula for charging a capacitor uh, and calculating the charge at any time during the charging process. Um, I don't think I've explained that very well, to be honest, but I hope you could follow through me working anyway. Alright, cheers.